Hey guys, what's going on? Thank you so much for coming to my channel. And today I'm going to be showing you how to port forward on PFSense. This is a topic that gets a little tricky for uh, some people who aren't used to working with enterprise grade uh, firewall software. So hopefully this will help you out. So first we're going to log into our PFSense box and then we're going to go to firewall and click on NAT. Now you'll notice I already have a port forwarding rule set up here and that's just for this demonstration just to kind of give you the idea of the importance of these two add buttons. Most people get confused if there's multiple rules in here. Which add button do I click? Do I click this one that has the up arrow or do I click this one that has the down arrow? And what is the importance of those arrows? Well, firewalls process rules in a top-down fashion, and sometimes we need to have a rule at the top of the list, or we need to have a rule at the bottom of the list. And that's just based on existing rules already in there and the order of those rules. In this case, it doesn't really matter which one we click because we're only port forwarding one port to one destination so the order really doesn't matter if we were doing more we would care about that um, order a little bit more so let's go ahead clear the screen and I'm going to click on the top button now this is where people get a little confused and that is understandable if you're coming from consumer grade networking equipment you've never seen all these options before and that's because your Netgear router kind of already took care of the majority of this for you. Now because PFSense is an enterprise grade firewall solution you kind of have to know a little bit more about networking and how NAT rules work in order to properly uh, put in a port forward. So let's talk about some of these options really quick. One of the first things you're going to see here on the list is this disabled rule. And this is handy because in the enterprise, sometimes you want to insert a rule and not have it take effect right away. And you just want it to be disabled, but there. You can't really do that on most, uh, most consumer grade routers. It's either you put in a firewall rule and it's enabled, or you have to remove it to disable it. So. This is a handy feature, comes in really useful when you're testing things. So that's one thing to keep in mind. We're not going to cover any of this other stuff. Um, this is important interface WAN because this is going to be on your WAN port. And protocol, we need to know what protocol the port is that you're going to forward. And this is part of that whole processing rules list. Um, so we could have a rule for TCP this port and another rule for UDP this port and if the traffic comes across UDP maybe we want that higher and we want to send it to a different destination than the TCP version. I'm just spitballing random ideas out there so may not be the option but that's one of the things to keep in mind. Uh, source we are not going to touch this. I've seen people touch this and they bork their port forwarding rules really quickly by touching that. Don't touch it. Our destination. This gets a little confusing for some people. They see it set for WAN address. They set that to either single host, WAN net, LAN net, or LAN address. There's one correct answer and that is WAN address. Don't touch this. This is the outside. So this is the destination that the packet is going to or the packets are going to. It sounds a little weird but when you kind of think about it the source is the sending machine or the sending router and the destination is our PFSense router or firewall. So that's why that's set for WAN address. And then likewise destination port range this is the external port that you want forwarded internally. So 
whatever this is. So like if your ISP blocks port 80, but doesn't block 8080 and you're running a web server, you can set this to 8080. And then down here, we'll set it to redirect to port 80 internally. So let's clear the screen and scroll down, grab my pointer. You'll see here we have redirect target IP. This will actually be your internal IP that you're port forwarding to. So this will be, you know, like it says here, your internal IP address. So that'll be, you know, your 192.168.whatever or your 10.1.7.whatever. And then our redirect target port, this is the internal port. So going back to that web server example, we actually have common list of ports here and we have HTTP, HTTPS, um, SSH, so on and so on. And if we need to set a custom port, we can do that as well. So in this example, I'm actually going to set 8080 and our target IP will be, oops, not 192. 10. Dot two hundred zero dot twelve, and then our redirect port will be HTTP. So I don't actually have to put in port eighty here, which is nice. Let's clear the screen. One of the things I like to always do, and I highly recommend you do this and get into the habit of doing this, is writing a note in the description as to what this actually does because you may not remember a week from now a year from now a month from now whatever the next time you come back in to your port forwarding rules you might want to clean it up you might accidentally delete the wrong one it's always good to have a description so i like to do 8080 oops off by one error <laughs> to 80 on 10.200.12. Or even better, if I have a host name for the server, I could say Linux Server 1. And then I know exactly uh, what this rule does uh, without having to click edit, go in and try and figure it out. We're not going to worry about XML RPC sync. We're not going to worry about net reflection. We're not going to worry about uh, filtering rule association. We're just going to hit the save button. Once we do that, you'll notice that our rule has been inserted to the top of the list because I clicked the up arrow button, which puts it to the top of the list. You'll see that we have our destination address is WAN, destination port 8080 our NAT IP, our NAT port, and our description, which tells us 8080 to 80 on Linux Server 1. I know exactly what Linux Server 1 is, so if I ever need to, you know, delete this rule, I can quickly come in here and delete it without accidentally deleting something else. Now, one of the important things is uh, PFSense does have like this double confirmation, so we have to apply the changes for them to take effect. Just because we hit save on the rule does not mean the rule is immediately in effect. So we have to click on the supply changes button. And I actually kind of like this uh, part of PFSense because this gives you one last chance to make sure you did not mistype something because every network engineer does it. We mistype something and we get locked out of a device and then we have to go to the data center or wherever to reset it. If it's in your home, not a big deal. If it's across the country, it's sort of a big deal. So this is why I really like this. If you're not 100% sure, you have a second to go, oh wait, let me hit that edit button one more time and make sure I'm doing something right. Click save. Okay, I'm good. Now we click apply changes and now this rule is active. We have a check mark here which means that it's enabled. If we click it, we disable that rule. There we go, it's disabled. And again, same thing, we need to apply the changes. So even though this rule is disabled now, technically, it's 
not actually disabled until I apply the change. So once we apply the change, it's now active, or in this case, inactive. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. If this video helped you, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you have questions, comments, concerns, uh, feel free to leave a comment down below. And especially if you have a suggestion for a future video, I do read all the comments. I might even reply and help you out if you're running into a problem. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon so that way you are alerted when I post a new video. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day.